Hello friends and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick and today we're going to be checking out another little micro sort of game called Bullet Waltz. This one is by developer Rocky Hong and basically is going to be an extremely simple premise of us just avoiding some bullets as some cool music plays and we see kind of a progression happen visually uh, and musically, I suppose. And let's look at the credits real quickly before we get into things. Uh, it's a very, very simple game, though, in that all you're doing in this one is dodging things, trying to pick up occasional power-ups, and just seeing how long you can last. And as you can see, my high score now is at 7. That's going to be much, much higher on an actual run. I only did this for setup. Uh, and I have about maybe two or three runs behind me other than this, and I did a little bit of it on the browser version, uh, but this is the downloadable, executable version of the game, which is just as good, if not better. Uh, well, I guess uh, less stress on your computer if you're not using your web browser or something. I'm not even sure if it works that way, but we'll see. Anyway, let's hit enter, and we will start. Uh, controls are very simply arrow keys. That's literally the only thing you need to worry about. And you'll see the background tiles sort of shifting around as I get around them, and uh, each shot that is fired on the beat We'll actually change that number in the background there, so you can see where the little tank thing seems to be, the turret uh, that's firing all the bullets. It will increase in numbers, and that's my score right now as we go. So all I need to do is stay alive. I will watch for uh, bright colored bullets like that one that just showed up in the bottom left corner, and if I touch any of the bullets, any of the walls, or even the tank itself, that is history for me. So it sort of works like Pac-Man in that if you can pick up the power pill, uh, you can then start attacking the enemy pellets that are coming at you, and it looks like it's such a simple thing to understand, but you have to keep in mind that these bullets are all bouncing off of each other as well as now the screen is actually reorienting, plus all the bullets are actually bouncing off the tank itself. So there's a lot to keep in mind. Uh, it's a very stroby game also, I probably should have mentioned that a little bit earlier. It's definitely got a little bit of that, uh, maybe that epilepsy trigger thing going that I seem to look for in half the games I cover for whatever reason. I don't know what the habit is. Oh, we got a very early pill on this one, or a uh, power pellet I guess we'll call it. So I use that to try and take out as many of these as I can in an effort to keep the screen relatively clear for me. It doesn't give you a lot of forewarning though before that power up drops away, so you gotta make sure that you, uh, kind of have that in your head, uh, that at some point very soon, things are all of a sudden going to get bad if I touch one of these pellets as soon as I'm not uh, under the influence of that power-up. And all of a sudden, things are getting very confusing and complicated and very hard to parse because the whole screen is shifting, and I could really use another power-up here. Oh god, they're all getting very close. I think when the screen changes colors, that's when we have a very close call. And I really love how it's sticking with the movement of the music to... Oh, it got me. I thought I was actually doing fairly well there. Uh, but it's sticking with the music in that the bullets were actually slowing down with each volley. Uh, and I also like how the screen starts out so big and then things just get more and more claustrophobic as you go. And it's very subtle. You don't quite pick up on it right away. Uh, but if you look in the outer edges of the screen right now, I think there's like six boxes in total. So you can kind of track... Oh, jeez, that was awful. You can kind of track how many uh, boxes you have between you and the turret itself, so it's just kind of a little weird metric you can use. And also I just noticed there's like a blinking, bouncing pixel uh, in front of the turret, and I'm wondering if that means anything, because I don't think I noticed that there before. I may have just not been very observant. I almost just ran straight into one of the pellets. Um, personally, I feel like this is a game that would benefit a little bit from controller support or having like 8-way directional, because right now, uh, the best of my abilities or knowledge, it seems to be that you can only move in four-way directional. Uh, not that that's necessarily that bad or anything, I've certainly played a lot of games that work exactly like that. Oh, I screwed up that one, missed the power pill. Um, but I think having a slightly smoother method to move around would probably benefit us greatly. Uh, as well as maybe even some more, uh, you know, diversity to the backgrounds and things. Maybe things could get ramped up a little bit even more chaotic than they are if we really want to take it down that route. But I also don't know how crazy things get as we get much further. Oh, I guess the power-up wore off already? That seemed remarkably fast, actually. I thought I had a while left before that was going to happen. Uh, I'm also imagining, like, what would happen if you could only move within these little lines between these uh, rotating squares. I mean, that would probably be a little overkill, though, let's be honest. Uh, let's grab that one. I wonder... Uh, I was just thinking, like, I wonder what would be if, like, you could kill the tank... Thing in the center by running into it enough times with power-up blocks. Uh, that would be like a whole different game, like a beatable version of this idea. Uh, 
I think it seems to be that, too, every time you try to run into one of these things, or when you pick up the power-up, it, like, causes all of the enemy particles to uh, spin in the other direction, like, to immediately change course. And that's... oh god. That's kind of a good call, because otherwise it would be rather predictable when those things are going to show up. This game is extremely addictive, also, if you couldn't tell by my reactions. Um, I really don't seem to want to stop playing it for more than a few moments at a time. I feel like I'm just... I'm having the perfect run just barely elude me each time. Um, not that there will be exactly a perfect run, because as far as I'm aware, you can never actually beat this game. Uh, but I would like to do a lot better than whatever my score was, like 48 or something. But yeah, again, if I could move, like, diagonally, I think that would make a great bit of difference for me. Oh god, oh, good thing I actually missed that pellet, otherwise I would have just killed myself on that one. Uh, let's see if we can get this power up. I could. Uh, everything's moving too quickly, it's very hard to track... Okay, I'm just gonna stay clear. We've got another power-up already going on over here. And the whole screen is almost all the way shifted around. Eventually it turns into just a square, I think. Um, oh god! Oh, that was so bad. I could do better than that! I don't want to stop. Why... Why am I so bad at this? I really just... I wish we could use the mouse also. That would probably be pretty helpful as well. Oh, thanks! You're gonna shoot out the power one on the first move. I guess I'll just wait until there's a few more blocks before I grab it, because as far as I'm aware... Uh, this power-up doesn't just go away eventually, although that seems to be a very common tendency among power-ups. But if I pick up a... S oh, it makes the field even bigger! I've never done this before. This is my first time trying a, a larger double power pill. I wonder how many times you can stack that. Maybe that's part of the late-game meta, is that you want to try and, like, wait for a whole bunch of them to show up and then pick them up in sequence. That's kind of a cool technique. I like that a whole bunch. Uh, again, a, an incredibly simple premise, but a whole bunch to do with it. Also, was I picking up an extra point on my score every time that I would shoot or run into one of those with my power-up? Kind of feels like the case, doesn't it? And that would give you a whole different way to look at the score-collecting element. Um, I haven't noticed that there's any kind of leaderboards in this either. I should probably go look at that again. Can we get a power-up, please? Oh my goodness, I don't know how I was supposed to handle that situation. And it looks like the whole screen's gonna rotate again uh, around in a, a counterclockwise fashion to maybe hook us up with an even smaller arena or something. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be that there's uh, any kind of leaderboards. That would be another really good addition to this. If this game was maybe a buck on Steam or something and had uh, some online leaderboards, some way of like comparing with a friend or maybe even some unlocks... Uh, I could see this easily being something that I could sink a bunch of hours into. I don't know why, but I just, I'm so susceptible to these very simple premises, and Bullet Waltz does it very well. You know, the aesthetic, the visuals uh, in general, I mean, uh, as well as the audio, uh, really come together nicely, and the gameplay is so easy to grasp that it's just like, it's all about how much time and how much effort, and maybe a little bit of luck too, where, where you happen to be at any given moment. Um, I think you'll probably enjoy this one quite a bit, and, you know, if you don't, let me know why. I'd be curious to hear in the comments, but go ahead and go grab this for free if you want, or even play it right in your browser. I'll have links for that right in the description. Let me know what you think about it in general. Uh, hopefully the visuals weren't too flashy for anybody. I know they can be a little bit stroby, as I see even here, just the title is actually strobing pretty hard. Uh, but in general, I think it's... It's bad, but it's not as bad as some of the worst ones that I've covered on the channel. And I guess that's saying not a whole bunch, because I have played, what is it, uh, Not Pharmacord Subcondition J. I think I just rearranged the order of those words, but that was probably the most strobing game I've ever seen in my life. It's basically just looking at flashing colors for 20 minutes, or however long you want to put into it. Anyway, all that aside, leave me a comment, let me know what you think about this episode. If you enjoyed it, consider leaving a like on it, that helps me a whole bunch. And of course, be sure to come back again tomorrow, because new episodes of Indie Impressions go up every single day without exception, so I hope to see you back for another one tomorrow, and I also hope you'll have a fantastic night, so I'll talk to you later.